Hey folks, how you doing? It's Paul. It is early morning on a Thursday. And I'm out taking a walk. Woke up early. Had all sorts of strange dreams last night. And uh, I was surprised I got up so early. I got up at 3 o'clock. So... Um, I'm not tired. I feel like I'm fully rested. So I'm getting out and I'm walking. Which is something I'm going to have to do. And I'm going to have to do it a lot. Old Paul, he gained a lot of weight. Anyways, I wanted to give you an update on what's going on. And this isn't just with me. This is just kind of a general, in, um, in general news uh, thing for you. Uh, I'm noticing, especially among the people's driving here, which is usually a tip-off to their mental state, uh, it seems like the stupidity among the people is getting worse and worse. And I'm not, like, laughing or making this up. I'm being quite seriously. It is appearing to me like the stupidity and the uh, dumbness. I mean, just people doing crazy things to save a f two seconds, uh, you know, risking their lives. It it's just getting like to the point where it's ridiculous, okay? And it just shows, and maybe it's the pre-election stress to them, this angst maybe, I don't know, but I've been telling you for a long time that I didn't think too highly of the general uh, intellect of the people here in the United States. I can't speak for everywhere else. Actually, I could, at least what I see. But it has hit our company now. And the people here are all crazy. And I do mean that. Looks like this is place is going out of business. CVS is going out of business. All right, so CVS Drugstore is no more. It has finally uh, seen its demise. That's been there for a long time, and it never did do very well. And uh, there can only be so many drugstores here in this one-horse town. Uh, Anyways, I digress off there, but that's uh, predictable. That was predictable. There's just not enough uh, money in this uh, one-horse town here. To be, there's, you know, like maybe Taco Bell makes it, and, you know, maybe, I mean, even the Winn-Dixie went out of business. It sold out to Fresca Moss. So, anyways, let me get on. Let me move on with this story. Uh, I told you people were were not smart, and they were losing their minds worse and worse, which is true, in my opinion. And that has spread to my company because when we took over this new place, we had a meeting to go to, and we had to meet the staff and all this. You know what I'm talking about. So we went there, and um, uh, the... Uh, it seemed like it was a nice place. It's very hoi polloi, all that. So not really super, super hoi polloi, but higher than most. Um, and they gave us uh, pizza. And, the, and you could tell it was a rough gig for the company because they brought us Pizza Hut pizza, which has turned into non-edible pizza. I don't know any of you that have gotten pizza uh, hot pizza, but I mean, I never really cared for Pizza Hut pizza anyway because it kind of felt like what it, what, when you were eating it, it was okay, but then it felt like a rock was in your stomach after you got done eating it, you know. Uh, and it was okay, you know, as and it was real pizza, they made it for you at, at the store there. And now I don't know what it is. Maybe it's only delivery now. But anyways, they brought us six pizzas, all cheese, by the way. And um, 
uh, me noticed that I was the only white face there. And uh, virtually every single person there, many women, more women than men, were Haitian. And uh, I don't know what my bosses are thinking because, you know, uh, here we are with a bunch of Haitians fresh off the boat. I, I, I just don't know what they're thinking. Not, not surprisingly, they lost the count within like a month and a half. They lost it. And I don't really blame the company for it per se. But when you get an old, dumb leader of a guy who couldn't cut it as a lawn man and is crazy anyway and incompetent and a bunch of uh, Haitians bringing up the rear, don't expect much. That's just kind of the way I see it. You know what I mean? And I think those people knew that too. So they lost that account which means certainly I lost my overtime and now uh, we lost another one and we're going through that right now. I went to work, I went to work on, uh, what was it, Tuesday? So today's Thursday morning and I went to work a day and a, two, day and a half ago, whatever it was, and I was told to leave and then I came back and I could get onto the gate, and then I got onto the gate for one minute and 50 seconds, and then they told me to leave again, which I did, parked nearby, and then they told me to come back and man the post. So I don't know what in the hell is going on. I talked to my boss, and I told him, uh, you know, he's been good to me for three years, so just gonna have to put hands off and I'm just gonna let him figure it out. So that's the kind of stress I've been under and I'm not happy about it. Um, the only good thing at all is that we, I, I think I had mentioned in my videos that there was a guy that I, used, I work with, it's a Haitian guy. Well, he, there were two that I worked with at the, the account that we lost that was out in the Everglades. And uh, even though that was really far, I liked that place. It was easy, and I had nothing but fond memories of that place. That was the place that I used to go early in the morning. I'd, I had to go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'd get in at 5. <coughs> I'd leave at like 4.15 in the morning because it was a long drive out there. No matter. It was a good place. It was easy, and the people were nice. And... Uh, I had nothing but fond memories all the way through that place. I was a place where I saw those things being shot up in the air and then they'd wink out at, I don't know, a thousand feet or something. I don't know what in the hell that was, but uh, that went about three weeks ago and I closed it down. They told me at uh, midnight, you know, take all of our supplies and throw them in the garbage. They wanted me to take them at first and then they said there's no point to them. It's a digital world now, so leave all the papers. So I was sad to close that place down. And then the company that hired me twice and gave me uniforms twice, Marksman, took that place over. Not surprisingly, a six foot three black Haitian woman was there uh, taking over the reins on that situation. And what I'm trying to tell you is this is what's happening and they're not telling you. They're, they, whatever middle class or lower middle class or whatever you want to call it, blue collar, I don't even know if it qualifies as blue collar, but whatever jobs are available now to a common person, they're gone to the indigenous American people here. They're gone. It's all being taken by Haitians. That's the big thing down here. That's what I'm seeing. Spanish too, I told you. Every time I go into my account, there's people there and they, they can't understand the numbers. You'd figure 
if they got a job at DoorDash or whatever it is, they would, or you know, like when you have to go and you have to go into a gate, you would think that they would know how to say four numbers, 3563. And you don't have to say that, you could say 3563. You could say that, they can't. They can't and they won't. That shows that they love this country. It's just ridiculous, folks. When you really think about it, it is beyond ridiculous. And you people are going to find out. You fucking idiots here in the United States, you're going to find out. You know when you're going to find out? You're going to find out when Bitcoin is $300,000. And I didn't think it was possible, but it is possible. It absolutely is. And you're going to find out when gold uh, passes for $4,500, $5,000, and you get gold approaching $100 or more, you're going to find out. Oh, silver can't go up. It's an industrial metal. You can suck my dick. It's already gone up to $50 before. I grant you it didn't hold, but it went up for months. So when the banking system here, the money situation, when it goes, that's it. It's over. And you people don't understand. You just want to support the uh, powers that be that are bringing in, loading this country up with Haitians and loading us up with um, Spanish who are trying to make this country into a banana republic, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Where you can't read four numbers in English or one number in English. What's the difference? It's just... And now we're going to have these geniuses voting. And, you know, for a lot of you, I keep telling you things and, and, and you just think I'm crazy because I do. I say that I'm God to distract you and to hurt you because there's nothing more aggravating than a person who has nothing, who has, who has nothing, who's a nothing, calling himself God to you. That's why I do it. My subs are smart enough to get it that that's part of the, the game. But the rest of the people are so dopey and stupid, they don't understand one thing from another. Anyway, so these same geniuses are going to be picking our president. Now, why would you think, why would you think that I, I would tell you that Trump is going to lose. Why would you think that? Well, because it's the truth. It has nothing to do with me calling myself God. It's simple math, folks. Let me explain a story to you. I made a video earlier, but I just didn't feel good about putting it out. So, the win for Kamala Harris is certain. Absolutely certain. And don't believe otherwise. Uh, the reason she's going to win, that as far as I know, and I'm not there, I'm not there, so I can't tell you that this is the truth, but rumblings are being felt right now about the massive war chest that the Democrats have, along with their uh, past previous presidents and so forth and so on, Obama and Bill Clinton and all of that. all getting out there and and supporting the charge for the Democrats. And when you have that, when you have this massive amount of money being put out, the other side is finished. Furthermore, I want to explain this to you because a lot of people don't know why I have my position. You think I'm just some kind of brainless idiot like you, most, uh, virtually all of you, my subs excluded. I want, to I want to tell you why you could bet the house, the car, and the house cat on a Kamala win. Other than the fact that the stock, mark the stock market continues to rise to new records. Because they know what I know, and that is 
Kamala Harris is going to get into office and she's going to print money and print money and print money and it's just going to make the wealthy wealthier and it's going to make the poor poorer. Now, let me explain to you how I know that Kamala will win. I know. I'm not guessing on this. When you have car dealers, they have to buy thousands of cars every year. Uh, depending on the size of the dealership, they might buy tens of thousands of cars. Now, is there a science to it? There is. The science, you know, because you always have that question. How does a car dealership know how many types of models that they buy versus other types of models versus trucks versus SUVs and all that? And the truth is, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Why? Because what they do, in case you didn't know, is without any benefit, without you getting a benefit, uh, they claim that they give away really good deals and this and that, and they'll give you uh, what you paid brand new for your car and et cetera, et cetera. And it's all nonsense, it's all fluff. It doesn't mean anything. They just put the advertising out there. So in other words, if they buy a thousand cars and they've only sold 650 of them and they've got uh, two months or a month and a half to move the remaining cars and get them out for the next year uh, inventory, what they do is they boost the advertising. They do that uh, primarily on the radio. It's very effective. So they, you know, claim big sales, this and that. And the people will come in, and it's just a natural process. It's just natural. The more you advertise, the more you sell cars. That's how they do it, folks. I know that for a fact. You, don't, you can argue or debate with me all you want. That's the way they do it in the car uh, sales business. Now, how does that relate to the election? of Trump and Kamala. It's like this. The more advertising that gets put out, the greater the chances of a political candidate winning. That's just the simple truth. And what you have has been a massive, and if you watch my channel, You'll see it every single day or every time I do the news report, you'll see it. Every news report, every news report has negative commentary on Trump from being crazy to being stupid to being old to being criminal or whatever it is. It's always the same unless you're on Breitbart and that's a, or what is it? The Washington Post. Other than those two sites. Everything else is negative. So how are they going to win the election? They're going to win the election with a bunch of dopey people like you, my subs excluded, because all they're going to do is just like they do at those car dealerships. They're going to increase the amount of advertising. And with that advertising, their sales. And that's just how it works. You don't have to argue with me. In this case, it's even worse because they're talking down to a president. They're talking down to the president. And aside from talking down to the president, they are, uh, aside from talking down to the president, they are doing also charging up Kamala. So what do you expect? What do you expect? That's what you have. And ain't going to change. And you can expect the expected results. Now, it may not be a double-digit win in a couple states. It may not be. But it could be. Because 
that's how bad it is and this has been going on for years and just to let you people know you dopey republicans because you the same thing as the dopey democrats trump lost the 2020 election and, and they didn't sling half of the mud that they did now uh, it's about the same it's just about the same except now it's more menacing what they're shipping to him it's more menacing so take it from there and I'm sorry I have to tell you this because I do not want Kamala Harris to win it's going to guarantee that the insanity perpetuates itself on, on a, just a self-perpetuating basis and you're seeing it I, I'm seeing it on my job if I have one soon because my company is charging in with uh, people fresh off the boat from Haiti you understand because that's what they're doing they're leftists and that's what they're doing this is what Eisenhower warned about General Eisenhower said in his memoirs I've read them that he was very very saddened and concerned by the ease in which people were hiring out illegals to save money. That's what Eisenhower said in his memoirs. You could read it for yourself. And that's why he did that. Now, that was 70 years ago. No matter. Greed is greed. So that's it. That's my video for the day. And I've got lots to do today. And it's, I'm gonna have to do things today because I've got pressing issues and none of it is easy. Take care, nice being with you. And uh, I know a lot of you just think I'm out on planet Mars. Make sure you buy your gold and silver because pretty soon you're gonna have a real need for it. Take care, bye.